All right. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about GWAS analysis on Biobank scale data. And thanks again to Edmund for the shout out to NFTest. So I want to start with the most important thing, so the team. So we are from the Institute of Genetic Epidemiology in Innsbruck. And as so many, we are trying to identify genetic risk factors for complex diseases. And uh, what we are actually focusing in our lab for 20 or 30 years is lipoprotein A, which is the most important genetic risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And our team within the institute tries to tackle these challenges with uh, computational tools and services. So you know Lucas, NFTest, uh, Sylvia and Johanna, and I'm very happy that they are all here with us today. So as I said, uh, I'm talking about GWAS analysis. Most of you probably heard about GWAS. Uh, it's a key tool in our lab since many years. And um, uh, GWAS stands for Genome-Wide Association Study. And what we're trying to do there is um, trying to find associations between phenotypes, like, uh, so traits and diseases, and, and the genotypes, so genetic regions. You see this here in this picture in the case control GWAS study. Uh, we have cases and controls. We are, we are collecting data. We are collecting genotypes. And then what we're trying to do is finding uh, variant differences, uh, allele uh, frequency differences between these two uh, groups in this example. And um, then you normally get a signal. And uh, this colorful picture, what you see here is a so-called Manhattan plot, where you see on the x-axis the chromosomes and on the y-axis a p-value. As you can imagine, the data gets bigger and bigger. Um, the largest GWA is currently with over 5 million people included. Uh, it's the giant consortium. Uh, and many thousands, millions of variants, and of course, different GWAS models and steps included. So um, you see here in this marked area, which should symbolize the GWAS workflow itself, uh, again, a Manhattan plot. And of course, you have to do things before you're running the GWAS analysis. Uh, we learned yesterday a bit about imputation and quality control. And our team, uh, together with the team in Michigan, uh, we developed um, um, a system, a software, uh, uh, imputation cloud service. It's called the Michigan Imputation Server. And uh, it allows you to impute your data with this. And of course, um, our next logical step is now, OK, how, when now we, we we made uh, imputation on the cloud quite easy, and it, it's widely used. And the next step for us would be, uh, or was, uh, now let's tackle GWAS analysis. Um, yeah, this slide is probably true for all the pipelines which you have seen here. Um, so it, it's quite tricky to run the GWAS. Uh, at the end, it's a program, a software you download, and then you run it on your data. But um, yeah, if, you, if, uh, if there's a new student in your lab, um, like running that on UK Biobank, uh, you know, 500,000 samples, 90 million variants. Uh, there are many steps you have to do before you really can run your GWAS model. And then at the end, you're able to run your first GWAS, but still, uh, you know, all these questions, what's in your head, uh, are my research valid, can I share these, how to visualize the data, and all this stuff. So for that, we, we developed a pipeline, uh, an expo pipeline, and of GWAS, and we really tried to, to work with Biobank scale data. Uh, back then, we decided to go as a first package with Regini, which comes from Regeneron. Uh, it's a regression modeling uh, GWAS package. And uh, besides that, we are, of course, also including all possible pre- and post-processing steps within the pipeline. So, and at the end, it, it really works with hundreds of phenotypes, millions of variants. And we try to parallelize whenever possible or useful. Um, yeah, the, the last months we also focused on restructuring the pipeline a bit into sub workflows. And here again, NF test, we used that, of course. Um, and it helped us a lot to do all this restructuring. Yeah. Uh, Quite a quick overview on the pipeline itself. So the marked area in the middle, that's the actual GWAS model. Uh, so Regene is a two-step model. Uh, so of course, we have to execute that. And um, first thing, what we wanted to do is that it works with our data from Michigan. And uh, Regene does not support VCF. So of course, we have a step within the pipeline to convert the data into Plink2. Uh, it also works with data from UK Biobank, of course, and yeah. then you specify your phenotypes, your, your genotypes, 
have all, having all these pre-processing steps and after you're done with your GWAS model, of course, there's things we always have to do, like uh, annotation of the results or lifting over the, to, to a different genome build, creating reports, and that's post-processing and also included in the pipeline. You see different colors. We are supporting different modi within the pipeline, single variant testing, gene-based testing, interaction testing, all coming, of course, from, from uh, the Regini package at the moment. Um, probably the simplest configuration you can run the GWAS is like this, so specify, specifying just the genotypes, the format, the, the phenotype, and then hit run. And for example, here we are running a single variant test, the subworkflow for that, and it executes for you these 13 steps um, with Nextflow. Okay, so what do you get from us uh, from the NFG was pipeline? So we were focusing, focusing on biobank scale data, so we really um, put some thoughts into that. Uh, so you get a report which includes all the phenotypes at once, and you see here the Manhattan plots, and as you can imagine, there are 90 million variants, and uh, we had to thought about the binning approach, how we can really make, have a, a, scalable, a scalable report within the browser where you can navigate around and and, and, and browse and highlight different um, genes, highlight different variants. You see that here in this picture, so we put some thoughts into that. And besides that, of course, you get all the data from the, from the, from the GWAS itself. Uh, we, are, we are providing other reports, uh, project summaries, uh, significant loci, top hits. Um, yeah, it's, it's a start. It's, it's, not, it's not all what we want to have in the future, but I think it's a good start that at least we can work with that in our lab, uh, and it helped us really a lot. Also very important for us is a good documentation. Uh, we always do that with our, with our tools, what we are developing. I'm very happy that Johanna, she's also here with us today, she wrote a really nice blog post on um, her first steps with Nextflow back then, uh, also introducing Chivas analysis, and if you want uh, to learn more about that, please go to our website, and you will also find all the parameters, a getting started guide, uh, configuration, and, and, and an FAQ, and also, of course, testing. Yes, parallelization is also a, a key thing here. Uh, we played around with that quite, quite, quite heavily. Uh, as you can imagine, the GWAS model itself is the most expensive step, computational-wise. And how we do that at the moment, we are iterating over the index files, uh, creating a chunk file, and then you see that in this picture uh, that we are both uh, parallelizing both three genie steps, so step one and step two. Step one is a best practice, which the authors of Regini have on their website, and, and, and the step two is, yeah, using the, the chunk file and uh, doing that in, in, uh, for all phenotypes at once, and then we're splitting by phenotype later on. We also try to validate uh, as much as possible, so we downloaded uh, summary statistics from the web, um, from the Penn UK Biobank project. They used a different GWAS model, the SAGE program, uh, and you see here that, uh, you see here NFG was against these summary statistics, and uh, for two phenotypes here, and you see in this Miami plot, uh, at least what you can tell from here, that, uh, then that the plots with two different GWAS models look quite similar or even identical. We also have other validations in our preprint, which is also available on the website. Uh, and then, uh, then we, we also tested that on Nextflow Towers, so shout out to, to Harshil, who helped us a lot doing that. Um, and what we did is that, sorry, what we did is that we run a UK Biobank GWAS with 460,000 samples, 90 million variants, and 100 phenotypes, so that means 100 GWASs, GWAS analysis uh, via AWS batch uh, with a runtime of 14 or 15 hours and a cost of $130. So for us, that's more or less a baseline. So let's see how we can improve that in future. But again, thanks to the security team who helped us move that to Nextflow Tower. Just seeing how much time do I have. Okay, so um, going back to, to software as a service, so now we have a quite a nice pipeline, the NFG was pipeline. Uh, 
as I said, uh, it's publicly available. You, you can download that, you can use that. But our background is software as a service. So we, we, we st coming from the imputation server, we see uh, all the big advantages, what you have when you run that graphically. And that's also true for GWAS analysis, because uh, for GWAS analysis, um, sometimes you want to have a control the access to different GWAS data sets, you want to track executions, and also, I'm not sure if that's also true for you, but at least for us, on our campus, it would be nice to have a predefined service and let other researchers at, at the campus use your service and you are responsible to, to, to configure that with pre, predefined parameters. So our question is now how to provide the NFG bus as a web service to the community. And here I go back to the, to the imputation server. Um, so we did that in 2015 and it's quite big, this service. So you see here we have uh, 10,000 users, um, uh, over 100 million imputed genomes. At the moment we have a rate of 1 million uh, genomes per month. Uh, and we developed it, as I said, with our colleagues from Michigan. And what we are using to run the imputation service is a framework we developed in Innsbruck. So we have NFTest, we have NFGBus, and now the Cloud Gene framework. And we tried, or what we are currently trying to do is to adapt this workflow to also run with the GWAS workflow. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's the current work that we are doing, and uh, it, it looks quite promising. So, um, so we have now our cloud chain framework. What's the base of, of the imputation server? So it's software as a service, so it's a really specific use case. All the user registration, which worked for many, many years quite well. Uh, we, we used all these features, integrated that in, in this new Chiva server, integrated in the Nextflow support, and then what you basically can do, uh, you, you can run a software as a service, you install cloud chain, install the workflow, uh, you specify the groups and permissions, and then registered users can submit and track jobs, uh, as, as you also know that, of course, for others, uh, from other systems like uh, the tower. Uh, as I said, that's a bit uh, work in progress. Uh, we are working hard on that, and maybe we have the chance on one of the next summits to talk more about these ideas, what we have in mind, and, and let's see where, where, where this goes, where this journey goes. Um, so, um, to sum that up, uh, I want to say that really we're doing GWAS for a long time at our institute, but what we have seen is that with this Nextflow pipeline, we just do GWAS nowadays. So we have an idea, let's run it on, on five, six different models and then have, have the results uh, right away. We're all coming from different scientific backgrounds. We learned that a good documentation is key for our system, um, and of course, that's just, just the start. So G was, uh, there are many models available. Richini was the first, uh, but uh, we have a nice structure in the background, so we are able to integrate new features, new models in the future, so feel free to contact us if you have one model you want to see uh, as soon as possible within that. And uh, we're really appreciating the feedback from the community. We are pretty new to this community, but uh, uh, we, the SQL team helped a lot uh, uh, fixing uh, bugs and, and, and making this run on, on the cloud. Uh, and of course, we would love to hear your feedback also for our SaaS approach. And yeah, that's all from my side. Uh, thanks again. All right, thank you for a very clear talk. Um, I was, oh yes, we have a, one a quick question. Uh, why did you choose Regini, and would you consider support for other algorithms? What was the second part? Um, would you consider support for other algorithms? Yeah, yeah. So as I said, uh, we started with Regini because it worked with UK Biobank. Mm -hmm. it, 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 the parallelization of, of Regini is quite easy to integrate in, in, uh, uh, with Nextflow, so, so uh, we saw a lot of advantages from Regini. Mm -hmm. But as I said, we restructured that. Uh, and uh, the, the pipeline itself, and we are now able to really integrate new GWAS models, also post-processing steps, post-GWAS steps maybe in the future. Uh, we really uh, would love to work on that. Excellent. Well, I think you'll get some more comments on Slack then. Thank you so much.